Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Lifestyles. I'm your executive show producer, Craig Sewing, and we got a great show lined up for you today. We go out into the marketplace with our amazing co-hosts and we explore America's finest city. Molly O'Dell is going out with Amy Scruggs and Jen Morse, exploring everything from the social scene to dreaming big about the real estate market. Let's get another episode of Lifestyle started right now. and today we're taking you inside of the recently renovated Saskas. We're going to be catching up with Steve Springer, broker owner of Ocean Pacific Realty, and Sean Barker. He is the VP of Operations for American National Investments. We're here at Saskas where the motto is no gimmicks, just stakes, and I'm here with Steve and Sean. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. So you work for the company that that really was in charge of taking this restaurant, one of the oldest in San Diego, and recreating the original feel, but really in a modern way. Tell me about that. Oh, it was a little challenging uh, because the community is so entrenched in this in this establishment. So. Uh, it, start, it all started from the history, so uh, we have a couple photos of the original bar, the original uh, woodwork. In and, the 50s, right? In the 50s, so we actually took a lot of that inspiration and the uh, what the, the, the family has accumulated over the years and, and predicated that forward into our construction needs. So with the help of our designer um, and fabricators, we kept a lot of the history, the octagon windows, the stained glass, the uh, uh, cathedral panels over the bar, all the the woodwork and trim the railroad ties all these little pieces the you know the vinyl booze uh, that are so iconic uh, that are actually starting to trend back now but this is the original so like I said uh, we're, we're all meat and potatoes over here so there's no need to hide behind anything else this is who we are um, but let's give the neighborhood back their original Saskas is what we try to achieve and this is with the the patio group this is with patio group and American national investment it says our parent company Company. Um, Gina Champion Kane, our, our owner and founder, uh, has been coming here for decades. And so when the opportunity arose to uh, purchase the property from, from the family, um, you know, they were the patio group was their first choice. So we we avidly jumped at the at the process to take on this challenge of of really upgrading uh, Saska's uh, steakhouse uh, to be better for the community. The family has been doing such a good job over the last 60, 70 years. You know, it's 65th anniversary this year. So they've been doing such a phenomenal job. As when we took over, we had to continue that moving forward. Uh, again, somebody's name's on the building. So right. it's not my name, but it's somebody's name's on the building. We had to stay true to, to understanding that. And you really maintain that feel. I know that you came here before they came in and remodeled. Yeah, I think they've done a great job. Uh, I started vacationing out here in Mission Beach before I moved from Chicago. And my friends and I would always walk down here and come either for sushi or for steak. Then when I moved out here, I moved to Mission Beach for three years. Whenever my friends got a raise or got something special, we'd, we'd go to Saska's for a steak dinner. It was fun. So I'm glad they did a really great job remodeling this place. Now Saska's is just one of many restaurants that the Patio Group has. Tell me a little bit more about some of the restaurants in the area. Well, we started in 2012 and uh, our first restaurant, the, the Patio on Lamont Street was Gina's first, but she's always had an affinity toward uh, Mission Beach. Um, so we, are starting to take control over our Mission Beach more and more. We have uh, Saska Steakhouse, obviously. We also have Bow Beach. Um, we have Swell Coffee Company. Um, we have Love Surf Vacation Rentals. Um, and in the surrounding areas, we have Fireside, Fireside, Harvest by the Patio. Um, from 2012 to, to now, only a short five-year span, we've you know grown, grown double in size every single year. Wow, that's incredible. Now, Gina has an affinity for the area, as do you. Yeah, Tell so me a little bit about why. I'm a why. food guy and I'm a real estate guy. So whenever I see or hear that the Patio Group, American National Investments, has acquired a property or restaurant, 
I think it's going to be an improvement for the area. So I love what they do with their product. They're always concerned about what the neighborhood needs and what's going to fit well with the neighborhood. So they've done a great job of putting in things that are going to be useful. Um, we were just talking before this about the, the Patio Express is a little market that concept that they have going right by a place I used to live. I wish it was there when I lived there. So I they bet. got some good stuff for the area. And that was really based on Gina's love of dogs. Yeah, you know, her vision has always been neighborhood focused and pet friendly establishments. Um, you know, her, her pets are her kids and we are all dog lovers. So you walk around our office and there's probably anywhere between 10 to 15 dogs running around right now. So uh, they're a part of our family as well, as just as our, our guest family. So why fight it? Um, and why not give people the opportunity to, to bring their, their kids into a restaurant or a vacation rental or uh, your local market without having um, any uh, reservations about it whatsoever. So it's it's great. So the Patio Express with our neighborhood community focused markets all locally sourced. Um, you could get a salad from Harvest. You could get a sandwich from the patio. You could get a wrap uh, from Swell. You it, it's little it's little bit of everything that Gina's been putting together over the last five years and. Uh, Ironically, it was her one of her very first visions was this neighborhood marketplace in specific neighborhoods targeted around San Diego. But it took us five years to you know, realize that dream for her. So. Well, I have kids and I have a dog, and my dog's my third child too. <laughs> yeah. So even if you have kids, your pets are your kids. Exactly. exactly. Tell me a little bit about the reception you've gotten in the community and a little bit more about the restaurants because I, I feel like all of them are very different, but there is a, a real farm to table theme here. Yeah, farm to table theme. Um, and you know, our restaurants, uh, I think that that, that saying is kind of gone away with it, the overuse of farm to table. Uh, we're definitely locally sourced. We definitely care about uh, how we source our product. A great example would be uh, one of the local purveyors, specialty produce drives a truck up and pulls up in front of our restaurant and we hand pick some of the produce that we make with our soups or salads of the day as we'll pull it right off the truck. Those, that truck is coming directly from farmers markets in the areas so it's not like they, it's coming from their warehouse, it's coming directly from the farmers market. So uh, we're really trying to be cognizant of, of what the neighborhoods want and like but uh, it's not always been easy. So, you know, taking over a staff because with such a, a, a legacy and, you know, uh, to come in and try to assume control of something like that, there's been ups and downs. Um, we've made some mistakes, we've had to learn and grow, but something that we do as a company, I think really well is, is try to listen more intently to our neighborhoods. You know, San Diego is very uh, overpopulated with restaurants right now and you have to be the best. You have to listen. You have to gather that feedback and really uh, with empathy and understanding, listen to the, the, the guests and find out what they really want in their neighborhoods and the communities. And that's what we really do well. If we our restaurant started as something uh, based on Gina's vision, it could now be something completely different based on the feedback we're getting from the local communities. They need more fish or they need more healthy products or they want more uh, pet friendly approaches. Um, anything that, that they can uh, throw our way, we're, we're listening to. It seems like there's, we've talked a lot about restaurants in the area, but let's talk a little bit about real estate, Steve. What's going on here locally? So we're moving in the summer. Oftentimes in Mission Beach, you have a lull in the summer because people are vacation renting or just renting or using their property. So they don't want to sell right before summer. Leading up to summer, you get a lot of the sales. After summer, you get a lot of sales. So we're seeing properties that do hit the market are going quickly. People want to get in before the summer. Um, there's been a few properties that have been on and off like that. Um, there's not a lot of inventory right now in terms of single families, multi-family, just not a lot. Uh, there's 10 multi-families right now. I just put four of them on the market. So kind of flooded the market, if you will, but they're all very different and we're seeing a lot of activity on those. Steve, I want to talk to you about something that we've talked about a number of times before, which is the golf tournament. It's finally happening. Yeah, so we do it every year. This is the 17th year of the Mission Bay Real Estate Association Golf Tournament. Uh, two years ago, we renamed it the Don Brown Links for Learning Golf Tournament for one of our longtime members who was instrumental in starting this golf event. But it raises money for the four PB elementary schools. 
Uh, every year we're trying to raise more and more. You see on the news, San Diego Unified has budget problems, so we want to look out for the schools in the community and just be as generous as possible. Uh, in fact, their group has donated gift cards in the past, so it just helps us raise money. Uh, we've already set the date October 5th of this year at Riverwalk, so uh, if you are interested in that, we'll put some info up on the website, and people, if they want to play in it or if they want to sponsor, can contact me. Well, that's such an important cause. Kids, dogs, we love it all here, don't we? Thank you both so much for being with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Our thanks to Steve Springer and Sean Barker. Be sure to come down to Mission Beach and check out Saskas. everybody, Molly O'Dell here at beautiful Grossmont Center in East County. And no, I'm not shopping today. I'm out here at the new home of Versant Realty with the founder, Tyretius Granada, to learn about all the amazing things Grossmont Center is doing for their local community. Hey, Risha, thanks so much for having me out today. Yes, I'm so glad that you're here. Okay, well, I'm excited to be in your brand new office. Yes. Tell me what's going on here at Versant. Okay, well, we moved to Grossmont Center because this place is amazing, one. Um, I just love the vibe here. I love the community feel. Uh, there's just people hanging out and having a good time and just spending their day out here outdoors. I love it. So when I walked into your office, I was like totally confused because this is not your typical real estate office. Right. What was your model behind all this? Well, I wanted it to feel like you're working from home almost, but with all the conveniences of working at a real estate office. So you have the printer and the computers and obviously um, being surrounded by your colleagues but I just wanted them to feel more like they're at a coffee shop than at an actual corporate -y office. I definitely so. think you get that feel when you're walking in. Yeah, good. And you, oh, you're thing. the design. Mm -hmm. Who designed this? Uh, I did. <laughs> Wait, so you got all the stuff and you were yes. like, okay, this is my vision, I'm making it happen? Right, yes. I think it's I definitely had help. I had, <laughs> I had um, Rachel, she's my, my personal assistant, office manager. Um, she's my stepmom, and she helped me out a lot. <laughs> she's like, she has so many names. We're gonna right, be like yeah, the exactly. longest name badge. <laughs> I'm like, what do I call her? Um, but yeah, just we we went out and we did lots of shopping and uh, staying here long nights to get this done. Well, so, yeah. I think it's amazing, and I think it's totally worth it. Mm -hmm. So tell me your idea, because when I'm thinking of a real estate office, I'm thinking like very corporate. You know, you're in an industrial kind of park, but you're in a mall. Right. What, I mean, why? Yeah, well, one, it's a it's a really great listing tool. So, I mean, the exposure that we can um, really push for all of our listings and just accessing more potential clients, people that don't even know that they want to buy a home and then walk by and just like the vibe and come in and, and they realize like, okay, yeah, this is the next step in my life. It's really cool. So, I mean, I go window shopping all the time for like right. shoes, purses, things yeah. like that, but you're saying window shopping for houses right. is a Why new not? thing? Why not? <laughs> let's, let's, let's just bring that on. Let's add that. Yeah. Going to Grossmont Center, yeah. honey, sorry, I came home with a house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, um, we're even thinking maybe like Valentine's Day and Christmas, get the perfect gift, a new home for your wife. Why not? Yes. I mean, I love that idea. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be mad about that, right. would you? No, definitely not. <laughs> so tell me a little bit, you know, there's hundreds of malls. Right. But you chose Grossmont Center. Yes. Why? Because they give back to the community. Okay. Yeah, so that's huge for us. Um, they do uh, a lot of different things. They, uh, I don't know if you've uh, seen the little fountain area. The, it's like a piazza. So people hang out there and enjoy Panera Bread and all of these different um, stores. And then uh, they throw coins in there. Kids run around. And those coins, they actually give back to like the rec center. And, oh my uh, gosh. Well, every time we're here, my nephew like grabs in my purse and is yeah, like throwing like handfuls so of they're coins. They're giving back. They're giving back. <laughs> so they're giving back to their local community. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's amazing. And one of the things right. that we talked about is their... Um, drive with the homeless. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they do the local toiletry drive, which I thought was amazing. And instead of just kicking the homeless out, yeah. they're helping them. Right, it's wonderful. I mean, I, it's it's amazing. Okay, so tell me about more of the events happening here at Grossmont Center. Okay, well, probably the biggest thing that I found out is that our, there are 58 free family-friendly events going on here a year. 58? Yeah. That's so, more than one a week. Right. So I don't even know how they do that, but I do know that there's holiday events there, um, like, like they have the car show. And uh, one thing that I'm super like pumped and amped and excited about to take my kids to <laughs> is they have like a little petting zoo thing where you just get to interact with animals. And so my kids are gonna freak out. <laughs> so, so just one thing like that. I mean, it's um, I, I I love it. I mean, just I think it's hard. You know, I think a lot of young families are kind of struggling to find things to do. They're right. done with like, taking their kids to the average park or yeah. things like that. So to have a place like this mm -hmm. where you can get everything done at once, you yeah. run to Target, you're running to Macy's, and your kids are having fun while they're here. Right. So you get your errands done, which is great, and then you can like negotiate with them and say, hey, we'll go to the petting zoo if you're. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> if you're good at Target, <laughs> here's my bribery tool exactly. for the day. Yeah, I don't As a mom, I'm sure you're familiar right. with that. Yes, I have to deal with that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's great that they host 58. Right. 58. Yeah, insane. Oh my God. Insane, really cool. So the, this, is, this is the place, I love it. So tell me a little bit about the other things going on here at Girl Spot Center. Well, you know that there is a movie theater here. One of my favorites. And so we love visiting that. And then we also love to go to Starbucks and then Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble has several kids, reading events, and they're always they're always doing something fun here. Uh, Grossmont Center itself had a Lego event, which was really neat, and That's they're always so doing cool. things for the kids. And um, there's also, uh, Grossmont Center is also home to the Black Film Festival. Oh, that's yeah. cool. And so they're so partnering really, up with them and... Yeah, and I, so cool. I was amazed to find that out. So that was really, that was a fun little thing to hear. And then they are also um, doing some car shows here. So that's... That's huge. So it yeah. seems like, you know, everybody, like I think, I mean, I love car shows, mm -hmm. but I think that's kind of like right. an older crowd thing. Uh huh. Then you got like, you know, the middle age, the film festivals going on, like you were talking about. And right. then the kids with the families. Yes. So Girl Spot Center is really bringing everybody here. Exactly, everybody together, community. I just think of this little hub, this whole office, the design is for community working together. And when you look at the actual space that it's in, it's a center for community. And so I just, I love it. I just love everything that it stands for. I like it. And I know that they have a huge emphasis on fitness. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> so I, I gotta get to walk in. <laughs> Bring your tennis yeah. shoes because they have yeah. a huge walking trail all the way around. Yeah, the did you see that? Isn't that cool? And so you can actually have like a little trail that you follow to, to get your workout in in the morning oh. or during lunch. That's so that's so yeah. easy. I mean, I love like walking around the mall, but mm -hmm. I think of it as not fitness. So now you can kind of intertwine your two favorite things: yeah, shopping, exactly, and fitness. window shopping, fitness. Maybe <laughs> there's a, there's a little boutique. There's a couple clothing boutiques there. So oh. if you like to just kind of you know, get something unique and maybe not, you know, the traditional clothing or whatever, but they, they have really, really neat little shops here. Too. Okay, that's one thing to we get did. distracted. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. We yeah. talked about how great Grossmont Center is right. like, for the community, but let's talk about what we like exactly. to do. Yeah, the Restoration shopping. Hardware yes. is here, the outlet center. Okay. So um, hello, there's, that's the only one here in San Diego. That's huge. And the discounts are insane. Oh my gosh. So, some of the furniture here is from there, I'm not gonna lie. So oh, I love that place. Crazy. Yeah. And then there's a vintage boutique across mm -hmm. the way that we were talking about, yeah. it's kind of unique. Yeah, it's like 1950s clothing, really cute. That's cool, so yeah. I'm, I mean, when I'm usually going shopping, we went to other malls where it's like the chain, mm -hmm. kind of your average, you know, I think I'm wearing the same pants as the girl next to me. Right. But when you come to Grossmont Center, it's really unique. Yes, it has everything. I think that's huge. Yeah. And the Target. Mm -hmm. I of think course, you gotta have Target. You can't, you can't not talk about Target. Yeah, exactly. It's where you get lost. Right. Well, Risha, thank you so much for having me out to your office today. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Of course, I think so it's amazing, fun. and I think it's amazing what you're adding to this space and adding to the community mm -hmm. of La Mesa. Yeah, it's, so. it's a lot of fun. I, I can't wait to get rolling here. Well, thank you so yeah. much for having us. All right. With Grossmont Center being such a huge staple in the community, it was a no-brainer that Risha would put her wonderful Versant reality here. Thank you so much for having me out here and educating me on all the amazing things Grossmont Center is doing for the local community. I'm Amy Scruggs, and we're here in Rancho Bernardo at the famous Rancho Bernardo Inn. I have my special guest today here, Lisa Herndon, real estate expert for Rancho Bernardo. And we're also going to be talking to the general manager, Jamie Lemon, with a special guest of Joe Baumgartner, the sommelier here. You don't want to miss it. Lisa, thank you so much for being here today. This is beautiful. It is, isn't it? Love it here in Rancho Bernardo. Will you please tell me who our amazing guest is I today? I would be glad to. Today we have Jamie Lemon, who is the general manager here at the Rancho Bernardo Inn. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, ladies. My pleasure. Good morning. So my question here, you have a very extensive background as being a general manager. Why Rancho Bernardo Inn? Why did you choose here? 
Well, uh, Rancho Bernardo Inn is an iconic uh, hotel with a great golf course and I'm originally from Belfast, Northern Ireland and I grew up in a, fa in a family of golfers. I really was uh, excited about joining the team and uh, JC Resorts um, are not only uh, well renowned in the golf uh, world but in food and beverage as well. We're a very food and beverage centric uh, company and my background is food and beverage. I came up through the ranks in food and beverage. Uh, the School of Hard Knocks and uh, definitely uh, coming up in every aspect of the food and beverage world so it was a perfect fit for me. That's great and I the reason that I brought us here today was I wanted to really highlight not only the resort and the golf course but that food and beverage component too because here we are in Rancho Bernardo right kind of in the heart of Rancho Bernardo at the inn here where a lot of the residents really enjoy this being here, the two different restaurants, Avant and um, Veranda, mm -hmm. that we have here, and there's a world-renowned world spa, everything you can possibly imagine here. So tell us a little bit about the restaurants and, and what you have to offer here. Yeah, we have a, a very, very great uh, culinary program. We do cater to our locals. We also have a lot of resort members and, of course, our hotel guests. So mm -hmm. we have a chef's garden, which um, our, our culinary team uh, grow a, a lot of the produce, and we use that in our dishes. Um, Avant restaurant here, we want to make sure that it's a fun dining experience with just really great products and uh, fresh and uh, uh, California inspired uh, cuisine uh, where people can really relax and just enjoy a great dining experience. So our veranda restaurant uh, has a wonderful patio mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, incredibly busy. Uh, it's just it's a beautiful, beautiful it's it? a beautiful it setting. Uh, look overlooking the golf course where we have a wonderful uh, menu and uh, some great handcrafted cocktails so and live music every night as well so it's just oh it's just such a great atmosphere down there. Lisa I know that this is tucked into a residential community here can you tell me how that impacts and helps you as far as the real estate and the value of the homes in this area? Sure absolutely yeah Rancho Bernardo Inn was actually here prior to a lot of the homes being here oh, wow. they were sort of built around the inn which is interesting so you know as we were talking a little earlier a lot of the residents here really enjoy being close to this maybe they're avid golfers or they enjoy great food and you know they enjoy being close here to the inn and literally being able to drive their golf carts sometimes right up to the How front. How fun is that? Yeah, it is nice, you know, enjoying the live music in the evenings. So, and the sunsets and all of the things that you, you know, benefit here from their fabulous patios as well. So, it's it's really, really great for this market. This little community, too, happens to offer several single-level homes, which is rare to find in San Diego County. So, a lot of people flock here for that reason as well. But real estate is, is really booming right now in this area. That's I fantastic. I think I say it on every segment, <laughs> but I'll say it again. It, it, there's no good time to sell right now. It's, it's now, things are hopping, there's a lot of buyers in the market, lots of great opportunities. If you're thinking about selling, now's the time, for this sure. This makes your job more fun, doesn't it? It does, <laughs> absolutely. Being able to meet with my clients right here at the Rancho Bernardo Inn is definitely a plus. Awesome, thank you so much, Lisa. Mm -hmm. And Jamie, you have another guest coming up for us today to hear. Absolutely, yeah, I'd like to introduce uh, Joe, our uh, Director of Wine here at uh, JC Resorts. Awesome, we're excited, looking forward to that. Thank you so awesome. much. Thank you. Have a great day. And we're back here today and we're with Joe Baumgartner, the sommelier here at the Rancho Bernardo Inn. Did Very I say that correctly? Said, yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that a sommelier is not just something you get, you know, because you just feel like it and it's a quick and easy process. This is not a driver's license. So how long have you been a sommelier? And tell me a little bit of that difficult process it's and how extensive difficult. it is. Yes, absolutely. It's a very difficult process. Um, it's uh, certainly more difficult than anything I ever did in college. I've been a sommelier for about eight years now. Uh, the, the process took about three and a half years of hardcore study, wow. Wow. going actually and doing classroom study. It was a bit like getting a master's degree in wine. Mm -hmm. wow. There are certainly worse things that you can study. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, but it really encompasses the entire world of wine and beverages included, you know, wine, spirits, beer, everything from the laws of wine, the wow. history, the romance of wine, which is what I really love about it. And then individual grapes and learning how to pair those perfectly with the dinner or the occasion. And uh, the, it, it, while it is a long process, it was really a labor of love, and it's paid off that I've wound up in a, such a wonderful location and a wonderful spot. Absolutely. I mean, you are a well-desired expert in this field. That's... I'm everybody's best friend. I, uh, I bring wine, <laughs> I have wine with me wherever I go, because really, my, I have the opportunity here at Rancho Bernardo Inn to um, 
create a dining experience for people and it's, it's not just food, it's food and wine. They work together in perfect harmony and it's about finding the right wine for the right occasion. At the end of the day, the right wine for the right occasion is the one that tastes good mm -hmm. to you always. Mm -hmm. But if I can uh, help you discover something new or help you find just the perfect pairing to go with that dish that you're mm -hmm. having that evening or the right wine to select for a large group of people that are coming in, I really love enhancing that experience. I've always, uh, I love throwing parties. So being the sommelier is sort of like I get to, uh, I get to host a party That's every great. night. That's great. So one of the things that I heard, and speaking of different kinds of spirits, someone, yeah, you, you kind of think this is all wine, but you mentioned a little earlier that you like to encourage people to drink champagne oh. with every meal. So tell us why is that? Every and meal of the day, absolutely. Champagne <laughs> is great, morning, noon, and night. It's the perfect pairing for any food. It really is, when in doubt, drink champagne. You always should. You know, it's perfect with a light lunch, with lighter salad, seafood. Champagne and fried chicken is probably my, my favorite wine pairing. <laughs> oh, in the perfect. Good Champagne and fried food. I would have never thought of that. Yep. So every meal of the day, it's, it's great. <laughs> Other than that, you should only drink it when you're thirsty. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> We'd be drinking a lot of champagne then, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, here at the end, you have a great opportunity to use your expertise. You have two dining rooms. Tell me so about the different wine menus and what you have for the outside and inside and what some of the events are that you guys do here. We do wonderful events all the time. We have uh, wine dinners. We have our chef series dinners. Our chef will be cooking outside for you. And uh, every night of the week, there's something going on here. We have Avant, the beautiful signature restaurant here where we have really forward-thinking forward thinking cuisine, but still very accessible. You know, the, And that's how I think about the wine as well. We have an extensive wine list, but I want it to be accessible for people. I want you to be able to be comfortable. Wine is a celebration. Drinking, you know, drinking and eating is a celebration. Always. And you should be able to come in, <laughs> be comfortable. You should be able to close your eyes and put your finger down on the wine list and find something, sure. it, find something delicious. And then we have our veranda restaurant. Sit out on our gorgeous patio, watch the sunset over the golf right. course in the hills. It's, it's almost like dining at the the Mediterranean. And so wine list down there is light and fun and fresh just like the restaurant. Oh, that's Excellent. fantastic. Yeah. I love it. Thank you so much for being here and being our guest today, Lisa. Thank yes. you so much. What a great time. Yes. Thank, yeah. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We had a great time today here at the Rancho Bernardo Inn. Special thanks to Lisa Herndon for bringing me out here. And we're going to go taste some more wines with Joe. As a real estate professional, there are only so many hours of the day. Which means efficiency is more than a buzzword. It's a daily necessity. Two tools from First American Title can help you keep on top of your transactions, either at your desktop or on the go. My First Stand puts comprehensive property data at your fingertips, where you can review recorded documents, past transactions, or locate comparable sales quickly and easily. Cost First can also ensure you have 24-7 access to closing cost data, allowing you to generate net sheets, calculate fees, update documents, or email, print, or save your reports, along with TRID calculation and consummation date timeframes. Each sale includes a number of stages to manage, each with the possibility to delay a closing or derail it altogether. Let Cost First and My First Dam keep your transactions on track. Contact your local First American representative to get started today. Thanks so much for tuning into Lifestyles. Hope you enjoyed us exploring America's finest city. Don't forget, you can tune in and engage in the conversation online as well. Visit us online, follow us on social media, and don't forget to tune in next week for another episode of Lifestyles. Have a great weekend.